Hello everyone, welcome again to UK and another video. In this video, I'm going to take you on a pretty detailed tour around my gaming room. I absolutely love this room and I want to share it with you. The problem is sometimes game room tours can come across as a little bit show-offy and I don't want this video to be like that at all. Some of the stuff here I was sent from companies, most of it I've brought myself, some of it is old, some of it is new and I simply want to share it with you. I've been asked for this video many times and I've promised this video many times. So grab yourself a drink as I take you around my room and share my passion of gaming. Let's start with my memorabilia shelf. So I've got my PlayStation 3, PlayStation 2. They're both my original consoles. Unfortunately, the PlayStation 1 isn't my original. I've had to replace that. That's my Dreamcast from years ago, one of the best consoles ever made. Then we've got my oldest possession that I own, which is my Amstrad CPC 464 and a selection of my most favorite games. I got that when I was 11 years old. I've also got a Sega Saturn and some of my favorite games from the arcade. I've also got here a MSX, a Toshiba. This is brand new in the box, 36 years old, never been unwrapped. I have made a video of that popping up top right of your screen. A fantastic find on eBay recently and it's literally never ever been opened. To decorate the walls, I've got some of these wooden track maps. I've got Monaco, Nürburgring, and the Red Bull Ring. I've also got some metal signs as well, which suit racing. I've also got some lit up LED PlayStation buttons. Moving on to the racing rig itself, this is a GT Amiga Prime rig, it's aluminium profile, I've got the monitor mount, the keyboard and mouse tray and the extra floor pan as well. This is extremely strong, I've got a motion platform on here so whenever I use this on a weekly basis this is getting shook around all the time and I haven't had a single problem with it, it's extremely strong, sturdy and secure. The wheelbase I use for driving, racing, everything to do on the rig is the Frostmaster TGT2. The wheel I use mostly is the Ferrari SF1000. That is a lovely wheel. Really do enjoy it using that, especially with the little LED screen. In terms of handbrake, I use the Frostmaster Sparco. Now I use this as a sequential gearbox and a handbrake as well and I've also got a lovely button box with a key so you can turn your engine on. The pedals are taken care of by Frostmaster and they're load cell pedals. My seat is a Sparco Pro 2000. It's a lovely seat. It's showing its age now because I use it all the time, but it really holds you solid, especially with a motion rig. The motion is taken care of by the Next Level Racing V3 motion platform. This is totally overkill and personal preference. A lot of people don't like a seat mover, but I do. Ever since having this, I've absolutely fallen in love with it, and PC racing is not the same without it. <laughs> This is the Arcade 1UP Atari Star Wars cabinet. It's got a light-up marquee across the top, which looks amazing with the lights out. We've got a replica control yoke as well, which you got with the original arcade. The artwork, I love the artwork here, and I think it just complements the room. Sitting in the corner as a piece of arcade memorabilia is fantastic. I had to pay quite a bit of money for that because they don't sell it in the UK. I had to get it from America, but I absolutely love it. We've got three games on the unit. The first one is the original Star Wars. I remember specifically playing this at the arcade and it just blew in my mind. It just epitomizes Star Wars in a video game. Then we've got the Empire Strikes Back. Very similar gameplay to the original Star Wars game, but adding new features just made it so much more attractive and playable. It's still playable today. This is one of my favorite games on the unit. Star Wars Return of the Jedi is the third game on this unit. It's very different to the first two games and it adds a bit of variety. This is probably my favourite Star Wars game of all time. My 
My seat is by Andersi and it's called the Red and Black Dark Demon. I will put a link in the description if you want to check it out. It's a very luxurious feeling chair. I love this sort of central panel, this sort of armour section protruding out from the middle. I love the whole look of it. Looks a little bit orangey in the video but it is red and black. This is the second Andersi chair I've had, the first one being a black cloth variant. This is a plastic PU leather chair. I do like the casters as well. As you can see, I've got a very uneven slate floor, so I need something that's going to be very, very strong and hard wearing. It really is a nice seat. This is my second arcade one up cabinet. This one's called Big Buck World. This is a recent purchase, it's actually available in the UK now. It's a two player shooter. Fantastic artwork, four games on there, and it's got some lovely artwork down the side as well. Again, it fits into the gaming room, fantastic. And when you've got friends and family come around, it's great just to come into the gaming room, get the guns out and have a bit of fun together. This is my flight rig. This is the Next Level Racing FGT rig. Now this rig can be used as a racing rig or converted to what you see here, which is a flight rig. This is how I use it all the time. It's a great rig actually. It's got the monitor bracket built in. It's very strong. I like the way the seat doesn't feel like a racing seat. It sort of looks and feels like something you would find in an aeroplane. On both of my rigs, I use this platform section. Now, the way I've made that up is with MDF, metal sheeting, wrapped in LED lights. I think it looks cool, and also, it solves my problem of not having a flat and level floor. For my rudders, I use the Thrustmaster TPR pedal set, and a next level keyboard and mouse stand. I also found these cool covers on eBay with Remove Before Flight on them to protect the HOTUS. The HOTUS they're protecting is the Thrustmaster Warthog. I've had these for ages and played everything from Elite Dangerous to Microsoft Flight Sim. They're strong, sturdy and they really feel immersive and authentic. This is my third and final cabinet. This is the Arcade 1UP Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition. Now this isn't standard. I have modified this to have a Raspberry Pi. I'm running Retro Pi for all the games. I've also changed the artwork as well. With the modification of the Raspberry Pi, it now means that I've got thousands of games instead of just the one from all sorts of eras, all sorts of machines, everything from 8-bit to 16-bit to full arcade conversions. It is a real museum of games across the ages and if I want to learn about a game or if I'm feeling nostalgic and I just want to go back and play an old classic, there are thousands here to choose from. These are my two Lego models, the Ferrari 488 and the Porsche 911 RSR. I've also put a lighting kit in both. I think they look fantastic above my gaming monitor. And to hang them on the wall, I've literally just used picture hanging hooks and put some cable ties around there. This is my PC. It's from eBuyer and it's part of their AlphaSync range and it cost me just over £2,000. The reason being, prices are quite high for graphics card at the moment. I don't normally go for a pre-built system, I normally build them myself. It actually worked out cheaper in the long run to get it as a pre-built system. It's got an i7 10700K in there, it's got 64 gig of RAM, that's a 3080, plenty of hard drive space. It's a lovely PC, it means that I can play games in 4K and I can stream games in 2K. This is where I do all my desktop gaming and streaming. The webcam I use for that is a Logitech Brio. The screen I use is an Acer G-Sync. It's quite old now, but it's still a good high quality monitor. For reading chat, I just use a very basic 24 inch monitor that I can swivel around and have in portrait mode.
TCP sent me this digital doorbell a little while ago actually after seeing my German Shepherd likes to wind me up by crying wolf and barking and telling me there's someone at the door when I'm streaming. I go out there, I see there's no one there, come back to the stream and apologise. Well not anymore. Now with this digital doorbell I can keep not only an eye on my car but also who's at the door when she barks. The funny thing is, this is actually quite a small room. This is just over three quarters of a single garage that's been converted into this room. And I'm amazed myself what I've managed to fit in. Three arcade machines, two rigs and a PC setup. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was of use to you if you are setting up your own gaming room. It may have even given you ideas on where to put things. But thank you for watching as always. And I will see you in the next one.